In this tutorial, we will review how to complete an asbestos on-site visit job in the portal. So if you want to see your assigned jobs, you can get there um, a couple different ways. You can choose the View Assigned Jobs button or go to the Job Assignments tab. And these are going to be jobs um, that you've already submitted non-binding cost estimates for. They've been approved. Um, the job request was sent to your company, and your company has accepted the job request. And then they show up in the Job Assignments table. So here we have an example um, asbestos inspection job at RTI's child care facility. You can see the job number here, um, AISCCF000021. So that's asbestos inspection at a child care facility. You can see the date also that the job was assigned on, on January 30th, 2024. So if we view the job, um, this first page should look similar um, to the job preview page that you saw um, when submitting the non-binding cost estimate. The only thing to note here is that the cost estimate tab is only available to company portal administrators. So if um, you have staff members that are also working on this job, since they do have access to the job assignments tab and all of the jobs in there, um, they will see the same view minus they will not see the cost estimate um, box here to view the cost estimate. So from this page, the job information page, you can go back in the survey, um, go through all the, the facility information as needed. Um, and then again, if you're an admin, you can also view the cost estimate. So you'll see that same cost estimate that was submitted and approved by RTI. If we move on to the other tabs, we also have the signees tab. Um, so you're welcome to use this um, if you would like to. You can add any signees. So any um, staff members that have portal accounts, you can add them just for your own um, organization. If your company would like to use it, go ahead. And this is not something that we have access to or track. On the scheduling tab, um, this is where you'll find the facility contacts, and you'll see here um, who indicated they were a primary contact at the facility, which was um, what they indicated if they um, were willing to receive contact from um, the contractor if they needed an on-site visit. So what you'll want to do um, after being assigned an asbestos on-site visit, um, you'll want to navigate to this page. You'll want to reach out to the primary contact at the facility, either by phone or by email. Um, and once you've scheduled the start date for the on-site visit, you'll want to go in and, and put this in immediately. Um, you will receive notifications if this, this scheduled start date is not filled in, um, just because we want to make sure that we aren't losing track of any um, jobs and they are being scheduled with facilities. So once that call is made, let's say you're going to schedule this for um, February 9th, you can go ahead and add that in. And then depending on um, uh, which laboratory you would like to use, if samples are collected, um, you can also choose that. This is non-binding. It's um, just to give us an idea of, of which laboratories are being selected. Um, so in this case, you're calling the facility. You have this information. You can go ahead and, and save that. Um, once the on-site visit is actually completed, please come back into the portal and enter the completed date here. Um, so this would be after all samples are submitted to the laboratory, if samples are collected, and um, actually prior to completing the on-site visit report. So in that situation, let's say um, you completed this on the 12th, you would go ahead and, and enter that um, date there won't let me do it because it's in the future, but um, in a normal situation, you would. And then moving on to the lab reports page here. Um, once the samples are received at the laboratory and the laboratory analyzes the samples, they will send the lab report to your company directly, and they will also send a version to RTI um, through their portal into our portal. And um, since they are a subcontracted lab, we are required to do a quick QA um, check to make sure that the results are valid. And once we QA that, they will show the um, lab report will show up here um, in your table.
All right, and I went ahead and submitted a lab report um, and QA'd that. So you can see what that looks like here. Um, and you're able to, to view the lab report um, directly from the portal as well. And then the last tab we have here is the um, submit review tab. So this is where you actually will be submitting the deliverables back to RTI once the job is completed. And the first question is going to ask if any asbestos hazards were identified at the facility. And this um, would be any asbestos containing material that is categorized as assessment code one through four, um, as shown here. So essentially any, any damaged asbestos containing materials um, at the facility. And if there were, um, you can say yes. And you'll see um, the option here to, to fill out this, this table with the hazards. If you say no, no hazards were identified, you do not have to complete that table to bring you right to, to the um, on-site visit report upload page. Um, but let's say there were hazards at the facility. And then what you're going to want to do um, is select the Add Hazard button. And this will bring you to a form here. Um, that you'll fill out for each hazard and it will populate the table. Um, so you'll select the building where the hazard is located. This is tied to the buildings that the facility provided in their enrollment survey. Um, so let's say for this, um, there was a hazard in building one. And then you'll want to enter um, the functional space, um, which is the room area or exterior, which you can do here. Um, you'll have to click Add New. And let's say we want to add this in room one. So we'll create a functional space. And once you do create a functional space, you'll be able to choose that um, again in, in case there are other hazards in that same um, space. And then you'll want to enter your homogeneous area ID, um, your material location, your material description. So let's do a better description. And then you'll want to um, enter the estimated quantity and select the unit, so either uh, linear feet or square feet. And then from here, you'll enter the actual result, uh, which you will get off of the laboratory report. Um, so let's say here, this was chrysotile at 3%. Um, and just a note that you can include multiple results if there was more than one layer or if various types of asbestos were identified. So you would just click um, Add Result, and you can continue to add those. But let's just say here there was only one for this homogeneous area. Then we'll select um, Friable or Non-Friable. We'll um, enter the assessment code for this hazard, so one through four. Um, so we'll choose, uh, let's see surfacing, and then uh, we'll select a recommended response action for the hazard. Um, so here, let's say we're going to choose repair and maintain. You can choose more than one as well. And then finally, um, you'll want to upload a photo of the hazard um, here. And then this will create um, the hazard, which you'll see fill out this table. Um, this table will need to match the um, NC ARPA Asbestos Hazard Assessment and Response Actions form, which is um, required to be included in your on-site visit report, which is the next um, section of this review that you'll submit. Um, but just a note that that's kind of what you're recreating here is the same form that the state requires under the law. Um, this essentially allows us to fill these these fields into our facility data mapper so we can show um, this to the public, the hazards that were identified at the facility um, to meet the, the rule requirements. Um, and from here, you can also, you can delete, um, you can also go back in and, and update it if you need to make any changes. So once you're done entering the hazards, um, you'll go to the on-site visit report page. And from here, you can um, add your report and you'll choose, so this is an asbestos inspection, so we'll want to select asbestos inspection report. Um, we'll select a file here. And then you'll, you'll see that the um, name of the file will be 
um, updated. This is a standardized naming format um, that we use just so we can keep track of all the documents that are coming back to us. Um, so don't be alarmed whenever you see that name, but you can view the view the document. You can delete it if um, you made a mistake and you need to upload a different one. And uh, one other thing I want to note, there is um, a link here to the program requirements. And um, the program requirements you can access and um, pull up. We have Word and PDF versions for you. This is a child care facility asbestos inspection. So we'll navigate there. Um, you can download these right from this link. Um, they're both fillable forms, the PDF and Word document. Um, so the layout and the um, instructions provided in this template must be followed um, for the on-site visit report. So all of these forms that I'm showing here, um, these were developed in coordination with the state and they are a requirement um, for our program. So you will have to make sure that the on-site visit report um, follows all of the um, requirements listed in those in those files. So please please review that carefully, um, because in our QA, once the um, review is sent back to us, if it doesn't meet the requirements, we will we will send it back. So that's all done here. And then the last page before you submit um, the deliverables is you would choose the staff members that worked on this job. Um, so this this is a requirement since we are required to to check to see that the staff um, that performed the job were properly credentialed. So let's say that um, a few members here completed the on-site visit, and then you'll also be asked um, who completed the response action. So anyone who went on site needs to be either an accredited inspector or management planner. And then um, the person who determined the, the response action um, for the identified asbestos containing materials needs to be an accredited uh, management planner. So again, you can um, select your staff. Um, you also, if for whatever reason, the staff that you're using aren't listed, you can um, enter them. And I will show you what this looks like in case we don't enter. You're going to get a little note here. So if you don't enter hazards or um, and, and you indicated that there were hazards, um, if you don't upload your on-site visit report, you will get this little red banner and it won't let you submit until you fix the issue. So we'll go back and we'll choose um, staff, some staff members here. And then you'll see now we um, that banner is gone. And then the next step here will be um, certifying that the information and documentation provided to RTI are accurate and complete and also that all activities for this job were conducted by the appropriate accredited, accredited or certified staff members. And once that's done, um, it will let you submit. You'll see that turn dark blue. And that'll bring you back um, once you submit that to your um, job assignments table. You'll see that disappear here from your, your pending um, uh, view. If you do want to access that job, you can just go in and choose under review. So that those are the jobs that are sent back to RTI that RTI is currently reviewing. So there we'll see it. And you can go back in and, and view this job. Um, you won't be able to change any of the information um, that you entered, but you can um, see all that you entered and submit it back. All right, so let's go back um, to the home page or the um, job assignments page and let's see what happens if RTI requests changes. All right, so if um, something does need to be updated and um, we do request changes, you will receive an email um, that lets you know that updates are required. And then I just sent this back, so we'll see it back here and it will show as pending again because action is required um, by your company. So you'll have access to the job again, um, pending status, and um, you'll see all of those fields you can now um, edit directly. So whatever change you need to make, let's say we need to come in here and update this to um, I don't know, linear feet, we'll update that. 
and then we can go back in um, and resubmit that back. And again, um, you will see that here and under review. Once the job is um, approved, that will show here um, as completed. So any completed jobs, this is a, a previous one, but um, you can see any jobs that were completed and approved by RTI under this completed status here.